Recently, the news broke that four children missing among the Amazon jungle had been located. Even though it had been a long 40 days, over a month in the jungle, all of these children were found alive. The pure miracle of this entire story is that no one older than 13 survived that plane crash. So these babies managed to keep themselves fed, build shelters, and fight for their lives all on their own. You are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I am Brooke McKenna and I just cannot believe that this story is true. It is one of those that is truly unbelievable, remarkable, miraculous, and I am so thrilled to have this information now, to know that these kids are in the safety of the hospital as they heal. That's how recent it is that at the time where I'm filming this, the children are still in the hospital. They are thankfully all doing well, but we need to dive into the story of how this all began, how they survived, and what they endured during those 40 days. So let's get into the story. So by the way, some of the names and the places I am not meaning to mispronounce. I have tried my best to look up the proper pronunciation, but if I do mistakenly say them wrong, I, I do deeply apologize. It's not my intention at all. But just this year, a family boarded a plane from their remote Amazonian village to fly to a central city in Colombia. Now, this was their mother, who was Magdalena, and she had her four children with her, who were 13-year-old Leslie, 9-year-old Solesni, and 4-year-old Tian, as well as 11-month-old Christian. Now, they were members of the indigenous tribe, which was the Witoto people, and they got on this plane the early hours of May 1st of 2023. Now, something that you should know is that a lot of these Amazonian villages, they are actually quite remote, and so people often stay there for their entire lives and don't travel outside. So this was, this was something that was very different, and the reasoning as to why they were doing this actually comes up later. Though during this flight at around 7.30 in the morning, the pilot would actually declare a state of emergency due to this single engine propeller plane having some sort of engine failure. Now, seven people in total were on this plane. It was a smaller plane, and this was the family, the four children, the mother, as well as two other adults. I've seen some people say that these were two pilots. I've seen other people say one pilot and another adult with them, but either way, there were seven people, and they all basically knew at this point that the plane was going down. It was inevitable, but the pilot did say he was going to try to make an emergency landing in the water, and that is when the plane would completely fall off the radar. Nobody was getting back to the control towers. And due to this May Day alert, the Colombian army was actually sent out to the general area where they believed that this plane was, though it was not an exact location. Now, as the Colombian army was arriving there, they realized that this part of the Amazon jungle included very rough terrain. And this was challenging for even locals to be, you know, piloting, to even really walk through the actual jungle itself. But the plane that these seven people were in was believed to be airworthy. It had passed technical requirements and it was supposed to be safe. But it would take two weeks to locate where this plane was in the jungle because the weather was making it extremely difficult at this time. Now, on May 16th of 2023, the Colombian Air Force would find this plane and they would find the plane as well as three bodies inside and they were DOA. Now, all of the bodies that they recovered were identified as adults yet the four children were missing. And I'm unsure if they knew that these children were actually on board or what they would find would lead them to realize there were other passengers because they would end up locating a child pair of scissors, diapers, a child bottle, as well as a makeshift shelter right outside of the plane crash, which was made of leaves and tied together with hair ties. Underneath was a whole bunch of half-eaten fruit as well, and they began to realize that they were most likely survivors and they were most likely children. This was even more prominent when they found small little footprints away from the plane. 
The rescuers believe that these children had made it out alive, though it couldn't be determined if they were injured, but they believe that they had either wandered off or possibly had a plan to go and find help, but either way, they were no longer in the vicinity of the crash. This rainforest, this jungle that they could be within, really gave urgency to everyone because this was a place with snakes, jaguars, and other kinds of predators. There was one survivalist that was interviewed during this time that said that the Amazon jungle is a place where you don't even want to lean against a tree without checking it out first because everything is so dangerous but the children were believed to be on their own with absolutely no resources and they didn't know how long they would be able to survive it had already been two weeks at this point and after speaking to their family members who were not on the plane during that time it was actually found that the family was traveling to this city in central Colombia. the mother was trying to meet with her husband who was also the father of her two youngest children not the two oldest but but he did take care of the two oldest as well. His name was Manuel and he actually had already gone to the central city because he had fled the Amazonian village because of threats from this armed crime group in the area. Now, this is something that is very prominent in these remote villages in Colombia and the children are actually recruited to these groups without the approval of the parents. They're forced into these groups. And so he wanted to get his family out of there before that happened to his children. So he ended up going to Bogota where he found a job and he was able to send money back to his family in order to catch a plane to come to him. So he had left about a month and a half before their flight. Instead of this happy reunion, he was now grieving the death of his wife who was one of the three pronounced dead and was searching for their children. This whole operation was deemed Operation Hope and about 150 soldiers were sent to the area as well as 40 search dogs to comb through every inch of land. The indigenous tribes were also volunteering as well and this was a miracle because the army and the indigenous tribes really didn't often get along. They were not on the best terms but they decided to come together to find these babies no matter their differences. However, the difficulty with the weather continued. There was a thick mist that provided low visibility in the jungle and since they couldn't actually see ahead of themselves and couldn't see the children, they decided to start dropping boxes from helicopters that had food in it, hoping that in these different areas the children would find at least one of them and if they were starving, they would have some resources finally. Their family who was not on the plane were desperate for answers. The search team was sleeping in hammocks near the crash. They were eating canned food. They never left the area during the days and during the nights. They were out searching. Now, the children's grandmother, Fatima, was actually asked to record a message in their native language. This was so the kids would actually be able to understand because a lot of these searchers, they didn't speak the native language. And so they were calling out but didn't know if the children would be able to understand anything that they were saying. And so she recorded this message urging the children to stop moving so they could be found. And this was actually broadcasted through the sky from the helicopters so that anywhere they were they could hear this but this wasn't all the grandmother did she was also out searching the jungle as well she was telling volunteers that she was still waiting for them to return her daughter's body and she also believed that god is good and that these children would be found alive now their father manuel was also out searching during this time but he was terrified that these armed crime groups that he had fled from and that the family was fleeing from at the time would find these children before they could and manuel said that the family had to leave at that point because this group had seized control of their home and were planning to recruit their children. They would threaten violence and they were capable of doing this with children as young as two. And so they really didn't have a choice but to leave and thankfully they were able to unlike a lot of families. But at this point, Manuel feared that they had already gotten to the children. Now, the search did not halt during the nighttime. Like I said, they were out searching 24 seven and the planes would actually fire flares to light up the jungle so they could continue searching. And then it was two days later, May 18th, and the Colombian president, Mr. Petro, would take to social media to announce that the children were found. This wasn't the truth though. You see, the tweet would be deleted not long after and he would say that there was some sort of miscommunication by the government 
agencies and that he was sorry, but there was no other priority than finding the children. Now, this miscommunication was allegedly due to the fact that contact was made with the children via satellite, confirming that they were safe. And so teams had been sent out to the three key areas where they believed these children were. They were very confident they would be found soon. However, that could not be confirmed. But one of the theories that the president had as to why they hadn't been found was actually that one of the nomadic tribes that traveled through the jungle had rescued them, had picked them up, were taking care of them. Problem was this tribe had little interaction with the authorities and so they wouldn't really know if they had found them. And so at this point, the rescue teams were being called off and the 16 people left included their father and they remained in the jungle searching because these children needed them. And thankfully they did because on June 9th of 2023, 40 days since the crash, the children were located by a military sniffer dog. Now in total, the search had expanded over 1,600 miles, but the children were actually found three miles away from the crash site in a clearing. Leslie was holding the baby and immediately ran over to these rescuers and told them that she was hungry. Tian was actually lying under a mosquito net that they had brought from the plane. They were all starving and then one of the boys actually stated that his mom was dead. So the rescuers really tried to make the rescue upbeat. They were saying, your grandmother's waiting for you. They were trying to make it so happy. But these children were weak, they were dehydrated, they had insect bites all over them, but they were alive. It appeared as though they had been using the very little strength that they had left to breathe or to pick up a piece of food and to keep themselves alive. They were at high risk of infection and soldiers and volunteers rushed to their aid. They were wrapping them in thermal blankets, they were giving them food and water, they were holding the baby's bottle up to his lips. And so all of these kids would be rushed to the hospital via helicopter for medical services as well as mental health support that they obviously were going to need. However, the helicopter still couldn't land in the jungle so they actually had to be pulled up and while on that flight, authorities were at the hospital putting together spiritual ceremonies as well as food from their culture to make them feel even better because not only were they just rescued and they needed all that support, but two of them had also had birthdays while being lost in the jungle that they needed to celebrate. The first thing they told us was that they were hungry. They wanted rice, pudding and bread. The only thing on their mind was to eat and eat. The father who was among the last rescuers who found them said if they would have been found even 10 minutes later, they wouldn't have got them out of the jungle because thunder and lightning had started at that point and the helicopter couldn't have stopped to pick them up. President announced once again that the children were found and this time it was reality. He said that this was an example of survival and that their saga will remain in history. For more than a month though, these children who were 13, 9, 4, and a baby had somehow endured the loss of their mother and the complete loss of safety and security and overcame it all. It turned out that the location where they were found, the rescue teams had gone by many times. They were around 66 to 164 feet away from them, but they would always, you know, stop or turn the other direction or didn't quite get to that exact area several different times. But when the children were found, they ended up speaking of a dog that had been with them for a few days while they were missing. And this turned out to be a six-year-old Belgian shepherd named Wilson. And he was not with them at the time. They said that he had left and was missing. But Wilson was actually there because he was a special forces search dog who was there to find them. He had been brought to the jungle and he separated from the group, but he found the kids and became their friend. His caregiver said that they lost him about two days into the search. And so he was alone when he found the children, but he did his job. He was said to be with the children for three to four days. They said that he was quite skinny and then suddenly he was gone. At this point, the search for Wilson began with the Colombian army and they said that they would not leave an element behind. They would not leave Wilson, even though they knew and they were conscious of how difficult it was to find someone in the depths of this jungle, they were still going to try. The oldest two kids even made drawings of Wilson, their hero, hoping that somebody would find him. As far as when I researched this on June 15th of 2023, the search for him continues. And this was a heroic angel dog that really just makes me tear up any time that I think about him. 
and wherever he is i hope he is getting the most treats and belly rubs and i really think that at a time when these children were losing hope that is what he gave them. Now, while the children were in the hospital healing, the Colombian Civil Aviation Special Administrative Unit would release a preliminary report detailing how the children survived for those 40 days alone in the jungle. Firstly, they went over how the plane crashed so that there were survivors in the first place. The report stated that the aircraft dove nose first into the jungle, meaning that the front of the plane actually had the most damage upon impact, and that is where the adults were located the children were more in the back now as the plane went down the engine actually separated during a first impact and the engine landed about 25 feet away which prevented the plane from catching on fire now although this plane had allegedly passed all of the technical requirements and was allowed to fly a report found that this exact same plane had been in a similar accident two years prior in 2021 where the engine had lost power and two months prior to this crash, repairs were said to be completed. It was good to go. This report claimed that once the crash occurred, it was believed that the older siblings decided to set up a shelter nearby and eventually they ventured out for help. Now the children were actually quite familiar with this kind of environment and the older siblings had some sort of an understanding on how to survive due to being in this indigenous tribe themselves and they grew up learning about the jungle. They were said to have eaten cassava flour and seeds found among the jungle that they knew weren't poisonous. They found fruit and they knew what foods were safe to ingest. The timing was in their favor as well because the jungle was in harvest at that time. Now, while reporters stood outside of the hospital waiting for updates, the grandfather actually went outside and made a statement that the children had took from the wreckage and with that, they had survived that when food ran out that they had with them on the plane, they ate seeds that were around them and that their ultimate survival was owed to their oldest sibling, Leslie, the 13 year old who was grieving and terrified herself, but ended up taking care of three of her siblings and composed herself enough to make sure that they were all being nourished and sleeping and safe. Now, Leslie allegedly knew quite a bit about the rainforest, especially because of her mother's teachings. She was already quite the caregiver as well. She would help her mother, especially when her father, well, not her technical father, her stepfather had gone to Bogota she was helping out with the children and that's also something that is said to be within the indigenous tribes at the age of 13 that's just kind of very common for these 13 year olds to be helping out with the children her grandfather then told a bit more about leslie's side of the story after the crash and he said that she had told him after the crash she had looked and saw her mother and that she then located her youngest sibling's foot and pulled her out. She started feeding the baby as slow as she could with the remaining milk in the bottle. And then after that, she started feeding her water. And Leslie said that all of the siblings were okay. And so they waited four days next to the plane crash, hoping that someone would find them. But eventually they decided to go get help. And Leslie ended up taking camping gear, a towel, a flashlight, a water bottle from the wreckage to help them survive. She was a very smart girl. They walked until they really couldn't walk anymore and they were always wanting to stay next to the water. And so they decided that they would stay put in that clearing and hope for a miracle. The kids claimed that they could see the movement and the helicopters during the search, but they would hide because they thought that they would be punished. To keep themselves safe from animals and bugs, they were hiding in different tree trunks. And those 40 days were not easy, but without Leslie, most likely they wouldn't have survived. Shockingly enough, their father, Manuel, actually ended up telling reporters that Leslie had admitted that their mother was actually alive for those four days they were in the crash site. Agarro a la niña de 13 años. Eh, hay que aclarar que la niña tiene todo eso. Ella lo único que me aclara es que la mamá estuvo cuatro días viva. Entonces, es un milagro de Dios. Y como creencia del pueblo indígena, para nosotros, esta es una prueba que me está haciendo Dios, que tanta fe tengo en él, y yo lo he demostrado con mis propias palabras. She hadn't died upon impact, but 
around four days later she was dying and before she died leslie claimed that she told them you guys get out of here you guys are going to see the kind of man your dad is and he's going to show you the same kind of great love that i have shown you and manuel claimed that they would end up telling their story when they are ready but the colombian president did meet them at the hospital and at that point their condition was announced the children were being rehydrated and so they couldn't be given food yet but their condition was described as acceptable now they are expected to be monitored in the hospital for the next month and the president said the jungle saved them they are children of the jungle and now they are also children of colombia a ceremony to protect the spirits of the rescued children in front of the hospital where they're being treated performed by some of the indigenous people that participated in the week's long search operation with the colombian military it is a combination between ancestral wisdom and western wisdom we can say between a military technique and a traditional technique that combination created hope joy and life thankfully the children do have other family members who are able to take care of them and help them heal including their father but the problem is who that is going to be because the grandmother and grandfather wanted to move them closer to them in a different hospital and yet their father manuel had wanted to keep custody of them he was certain that he would get the custody of them and that is when the colombian institute of family welfare so their cps had a caseworker assigned to these children at the request of the grandparents because they were going to fight for custody. Now the grandparents began to tell this caseworker that their daughter who had passed in the plane crash had been beaten by Manuel while they lived together and that the children would often go run and hide in the forest while they fought. Now hearing this, Manuel actually did make a statement about it and he said that their home situation was tense but it was not gossip for the world and he did admit to verbally attacking his wife and physically very little. I assume the custody of the two youngest who are his biological children will be more likely to be given to Manuel though it could be more of a fight for him to keep the oldest two as they have a different biological father. Now due to this being such a recent case the custody of these kids does hang in the balance and i just hope everyone comes together for the sake of these kids and gives them a healthy and safe environment to fully heal and to grieve the loss of their mother the last thing that they need is fighting among the family in a custody battle with cps at the forefront and to separate these kids at this point could be tremendously traumatic for them due to that trauma bond that they have surviving together and being the only people that they had to rely on for 40 days this could really really mess with leslie who had to become their main caregiver and seeing her separated from them could be detrimental to her mental health as of june 15 2023 the children remain in the hospital and the baby is actually in intensive care just due to her age and then wanting to monitor her a little bit more but the caseworker said that she has been to the hospital and that the kids have spoken a little but she wants to give them some more time they are said to be drawing and playing with each other now and i will add in if there are any updates before i post this video they have a long road of recovery ahead but their resilience it shows that they are fighters and i think that they will be able to get through anything especially if they have the right support but unfortunately these armed groups in colombia that they were fleeing from weren't just after this family this is something that indigenous peoples deal with often and attempted escapes are common but more than anything they live in fear their children are taken and there's nothing they can do in their hometown there is no sewage no electricity and they feel like they have been abandoned by the state and they're afraid to speak out even against you know the state or these crime groups because you either have to choose to speak out or choose to protect your family you cannot do both and so a lot of members of these tribes live in fear it's a huge problem that i do not know enough about to speak on to how we can help but if you do know more, please let me know. I would love to learn about if there are ways to help, if there are ways to, you know, contact these people or ways to get them out of these situations because it is devastating that this family were trying to have a better life and trying to save their children. And the in the end that they did save their children. The children save themselves but the parents got them out of that situation and that is so beautiful how much they cared about their children to risk their own lives in leaving and for the mother to lose her own life 
but that is not how it should be and they deserve so much better. But between these children's dying mother who helped them through those first four days, between their dog friend that gave them hope and all of the people searching for them, I think these children had so much love and hope on their side and whatever you believe in, I think someone was looking out for them. And I cannot wait to see what they do with their beautiful lives, even if it's simply that they're going to love and be loved in this lifetime. Had you heard of this story before I brought it to you today? Do you know any more information about these kids, this family, or indigenous tribes in general? Please let me know down below. And thank you for watching. Don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough. And I love you to absolute pieces. Okay. Bye.